This area around Cold Bay is known for its trophy brown bears, but this season has been a really tough year due to the weather. We've had weather issues day in, day out, so there's a lot of waiting and anticipation of what's going to happen next. We flew in and uh, we got a call from our PH that he was socked in and couldn't get to us. We're anxious to go hunting, but we're kind of worried about the PH also. What's interesting about bringing clients into the field is that you know, they're used to having full control of their schedule. That's not the way it is here, and everybody got a first-hand dose of that. Oh, me. You caught me. We're having Swedish meatballs and sour cream sauce tonight. This bear hunting's great. I wish you'd come on. I'm anxious. I wake up this morning at five o'clock, get up, get ready to go. The weather's cleared up. It looks like we should be able to go hunting. The wind abated a little bit and the ceiling lifted overnight. And uh, I arrived in Cold Bay. And so we loaded up in the airplane to hop us into our spike camp. And then when our plane was able to move out of Cold Bay, it was only able to take us uh, closer to our spike camp, a place called Nelson Lagoon. We were then stranded there. We got up there, and uh, the pilot from the camp started to shuttle folks in, but not all of us could go at once. So we wandered into town, and while we were waiting, there was a storm passed behind us and left a fantastic rainbow. I can't imagine living out here. It's as nice as it would be on some days and as lonely as it would be most of the time. And being a little bit of an Irishman, I suspected there was a brown bear waiting for me at the end of that rainbow. There's a saying about men having the watches, but the land having all the time. Especially in Alaska, hunters are at the mercy of the weather and geography. We are stuck in Nelson Lagoon, but uh, the guys got to experience real native hospitality. The weather just wouldn't let us get to base camp. We had no place to sleep, but people up here are very accommodating. I'm sure the weather probably forces that, but they seem to enjoy it. You know, these small communities uh, out in this part of the country, everybody at one time or another has been in that situation. So when they find people that are in need, they're happy to take them in and take care of things for them. You know, Mike, I don't believe anything up here is based on the clock or what time it is. I think everything's based around what the weather's going to do today. Well, you're right about that. Well, let's see what this fog is doing this morning. I think I can start to see some of the foothills over there. That's a good thing. I'm anxious to get over there. I can see that pilot come flying in right below those clouds. Maybe we'll finally get to see what a, a grizzly looks like. We sat down at the airstrip waiting for the flight into base camp. After five or six hours, we finally got another charter and it brought us out to camp. We thought we'd get out in the morning and it was, it was almost evening before we finally got into spike camp. And of course, it's a requirement that we can't fly and hunt the same day in Alaska. So, you know, if we didn't get in that evening, we were gonna use yet another day. We might have been pushing the weather a little bit. It had been foggy and the ceiling kept changing. But the pilot, he had confidence, he'd flown it a lot before, and it's only about a 10 minute flight. A white cook tent and a few little green tents, and, and here we were, set out in the midst of a bunch of tundra tussocks. This is brown bear country. They're big, and they're hungry when they come out of hibernation. The Alaska brown bear is the larger cousin of the grizzly and the largest land carnivore in the world. It can hit 35 miles per hour in a burst of speed with a bite force of more than two tons. It's estimated that a brown bear has the strength of five men. So you guys are 
guys, you ready to go and ready to head out? Ready. Yeah, I understand we've got a two or three hour hike to get up on that ridge. How do we get there? Well, we're gonna we're gonna avoid some of the brush by uh, hitting a couple game trails. First, there's a moose trail comes right out of that draw up to the right. How long will it take us? I think it's probably a couple hours. Okay. And then we'll stake out that ridge, uh, left and right side, and, and see if we can't uh, spot a bear this morning. I'm ready. I need some more scope brush. Let's go do okay. it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we got up, we got out of the tent, and oh boy was the weather bad. It was sleeting, snowing, raining, couldn't make up its mind, it was blowing, it was cold, and the tundra looks flat from a distance, but boy, when you get up close, it's hard to cross. This thousand foot of tundra that we have to cross is, they call it tussocks. It's 18 inches to two and a half feet deep. It's kind of like maybe walking onto a real soft mattress. It's really difficult to walk across. No rhythm to it. You're either stepping in a hole or you're stepping on a knob every step. We got some pretty good current here. I'm already overheated. When we got up to the top, where we were going to be glassing for bears for the day, and the guide set us up so that we could cover a lot more territory, he put Randall on one side of the ridge and I was just on the other side of the ridge, not more than 50 yards away. The problem was, that's when the weather really hit. The temperature dropped a lot, it started snowing hard, so hard it just stung your face. Tough conditions, we stuck on the side of that hill glassed as best we could and just took a couple breaks, got out of the wind behind some of the brush and went back at it. We knew that we'd have to stick it out until late evening is when the bears really moved the best. It sleeted, it rained, the wind blew. We hunted every bush up there looking for a bear. We worked tirelessly at it, but just no success at all. We saw no activity at all. The first day turned out to be something of a bust, but the second day dawned a lot better than the first day. Bob, is our game plan all based on that blue sky? I think so. No blue sky, no bears. Yeah. So we're, uh, we're, we're thinking that yesterday they, they froze out because it was snowing, blowing about 30 miles an hour over the top of that ridge, and they were huddled up just like we were. Better weather by far. The ceiling had lifted, Still overcast, but it wasn't snowing, it wasn't raining. We thought if there was a chance bears were going to be moving, it would be today. So we crossed the tussocks, made the river crossing again, back up the hill. Well, I'm thinking we're going to head up this ridge here. We're on a real good bear trail here. Followed it up from the bottom so we can see anything that comes out of there after it comes out. And I'm hoping that it'll come down, get on the flat, and it'll be browsing, looking for greens, or they'll be coming through. So we got a pretty good opportunity, okay. left or right. All right, and we're see gonna have to hustle out. down the hill to get them. We're gonna have to move down the hill. It took us an hour and a half to get up yesterday, but only about a half an hour to get down, so shouldn't be too bad. And maybe only 15 minutes if we're chasing something, huh? Uh, that's true. couple hours, we were sitting in the zone and we started glassing. Another long day, but we uh, hung in there, kept glassing, kept glassing. Oh, I got a bear. He's out uh, at the edge of the lake, he's going into the tundra. Out waddled a huge brown bear, probably a 10 footer. I mean, you didn't even need glasses to see him at five miles, he was so big. He's huge. Boy, I wanted to go after him. But we looked at all the terrain between us and him, and at the rate he was moving, we decided we couldn't do it. But we got to watch him for about 30 minutes. It was pretty painful, but we knew there was more where he came from. That bear's out here. I 
getting uh, towards the evening by about 9, 10 o'clock. Boy, it's uh, really tempting to pack up and leave. You know, you've sat there all day, nothing going on, but uh, it's always very late in the evening uh, when you have your best odds of seeing one of these big bears. Glassing both sides of the hill here for 11 hours now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's getting awfully late but it's going to be dark. But oh, you know what? I think I've got one here. What do you got? I've got one right up in the green. It's a third patch of green over. Oh, I got him. I got him. Oh, man, he is dark brown. Yep, it looks like a boar. It's 485, 500 yards over there. We, we got to cut the distance. Let's try and close, let's try and close that distance. Well, I was anxious to get as close as we could, and we had to take an approach where we'd glass them and make sure he was feeding away from us and then we'd run forward and if he started to move or turn we'd freeze in place. And hopefully when he looked around we'd just look like another plant. He's trying to see if he can get a smell of what's making him curious. He doesn't know what it is but something's out of place and he slowly starts working down the hill towards us. We're still as can be. We don't move a muscle. He ends up spinning back around, moving back up onto the greens, and he starts to feed again. That gives Mike and I a chance to make our moves while he's distracted. Bob and Mike are in the go mode. Every time the bear sets down or turns his head or looks away, they make a run for it. We repeated that several times across this opening until we got within about 250 and had a little bit of brush cover. Okay, pause. Okay, what do you think? Yeah. Okay, back, back on. The first shot you take on a brown bear is the absolute most important one. To get that first shot in them and try to break those shoulders on them. All right, I, I got him. And you want to put one right through the front shoulders. Try and break some bone. The first one punched through and then busted out his left shoulder. He still managed to get up and he was moving really fast. Follow up. And then you followed up with Dangerous Game expanding, so you put a big shock to his system. Got at least one more round in him and that put him down. He's down. Nice. Great job. Nice job. Congratulations. Right. Mike, that was great shooting. Thanks, Bob. Last one did it. I could hardly believe it when the bear was down. He'd come out of nowhere. We had been watching that hill and that valley all day long. Taking a couple of shots, but he was down for the count. I used my patented recoil reducer here to... <laughs> You did a great job. This hunting trip was really special to me because I had two objectives in mind. I really wanted to go hunting with Randall Pence. He's a good friend. I enjoy working with him. I've learned a lot about hunting from him. Really nice bear down. First one Mike has ever killed. It's the first hunt I'd ever been on where a bear was killed. So I've absolutely enjoyed every minute of it. And I, I wanted to get a brown bear because it's dangerous game. It's in beautiful wild country. It just doesn't get any better. It's a pristine place and at the same time it's, it's radical, it's hostile. But if you can just slow down and you can get into the pace of your surrounding, really gives a guy an opportunity to see a part of Alaska that nobody else gets to see. The guys from Ruger, they hung in there and we made it happen. <laughs>